are in the ring. Ricky Steamboat, Jay Youngblood, and they're up against Tom Lentz and Bill Howard. And I have another guest stepping in with me. We won't be able to see him, but Paul, number one, Jones, I'm sure he's going to have an opinion on Starcade 83. Also, as we witness the World Tag Team Champions, Ricky Steamboat and Jay Youngblood, the unprecedented four times World Tag Team Champions. And that might mean a little bit to you, Paul Jones, because you have a tag team now. You know, it's kind of hard in here, Weaver, to even hear yourself talk or even think because of the noise. But I want to say this. I was very, very impressed that Harley Race gave uh, Rick Flair the title match and also that it was placed in North Carolina. Now, all right, ladies and gentlemen, Ricky Steamboat's in the ring, a great champion he is. He has some comments we want to bring to you on Starcade 83 the and a flair for gold. professional sports is to be a champion, whether it be the Super Bowl at football or the Stanley Cup in hockey or the world's heavyweight champion in professional wrestling. Now, Ric Flair has had the belt one time, and Harley Racey took that away from him. You also put up a $25,000 bounty to try and put him out of professional wrestling, but that didn't work. Just like in Greensboro on Thanksgiving Day, when this man, Ric Flair, is going up against you in a steel cage, you holding the world championship belt is going to be your last time. I, myself, Rick Steamboat, would love to see Ric Flair as a world heavyweight champion once again. Well, there, fans, we've heard it from Rick Steamboat. He would like to see the, uh, Rick Flair as a world heavyweight champion. And I know Paul Jones would like to see his team, the Assassins, in there against Steamboat and Youngblood. Well, that's exactly right. Let me, well, I'm trying to make a point here. Let me say, I saw the film flick with film flick where Crockett was out there, and, and he they was awarded him uh, the, the match, the uh, Starcade of the century or whatever. And i tell you one thing. I saw the other in their hands. And I'll tell you, deep down inside, they probably wanted to beat Crockett up because he got the match where he wanted it. Well, let me tell you something right now. That's one match that I am not going to miss. And one thing about Steve Bowden and Youngblood, they call themselves champions. I have two of the greatest champions in the world today just because they, had, they held their mass. They've never lost their mass to anybody longer than anybody has ever held any title, including the world titles that Ricky Steamboat and Jay Youngblood hold today. And I want to say this. I don't think Steamboat and Youngblood have the guts to wrestle my two assassins. The one assassin, the assassin number one has the hardest professional wrestling, and the assassin number two has the biggest arms in professional wrestling, and you should see him when he puts that bear hug. Their eyeballs bug out. Well, I have to say that Ricky Steamboat and uh, Jay Youngblood have a lot of guts. They held four times the World Tag Team Championship. They came back. When they lost it, they came back and won it from adversity, from injuries, and they're right back on top, and we will not, not count out the Briscoe brothers. We cannot write them off, and I think as Ricky Steamboat and Jay Youngblood have a lot of guts for putting that title back up against the Briscoe brothers. I know the Briscoe brothers are going to be angry because of their super egos. They've been world champions, uh, and they've been champions in every division of wrestling since their amateur days all the way up through college and high school. They always attain the championship, and I know they're going to want this back. So Steamboat and Youngblood not only have to look at Mark Lewin and Sullivan, you can't write off the Briscoes, and I'm sure down the line somewhere the Assassins are going to be looked at because they are a team to be reckoned with that is for sure they're going to be looked at by the world champions ricky steamboat and jay youngblood listen it's my job to make sure that they're being looked at very very soon can you imagine if they ever wrestled the assassins one time the assassins would beat them for the belts and then the assassins would not only be the world champions the longest one they ever held to keep their mask on but they'd also keep the belts just as long Starcade 83, I can't get that out of my mind. I know that it's a great event brought by the Crockett family to the Carolinas to show the importance of this wrestling and professional wrestling all over the world. I'm sure that on that night, on that wrestling program, that before it happens, there will be a lot more great matches added to the one of Flair and Race. And we'll have to wait and see, but I'm sure that the Crockett family will bring a lot more great matches on that one particular card. In the ring, we watch the world champions, and right now, big Tom Lentz 
goes after Ricky, misses that elbow. They're not invincible team. They get in trouble. I know you're witnessing their match right now, Paul. I'm sure that you're looking for little loopholes in their offense, little loopholes in their defense. Yeah, they're just like every other champion I've ran into. They call their shots. Steve and Youngblood are no exception. You notice that they're not challenging or accepting matches from the assassin. But they are. But they are accepting matches against the Briscoe brothers, giving them their return matches, and you cannot sell them, boys, Shark. We will not ever write off the Briscoe brothers. Fantastic maneuver. We could have a winner right here. Jay Youngblood comes up with a victory. He pins Big Tom Lips in the center of the ring. Gets a victory that all the fans go wild for here. The children, the girls, the young and old like love Steve and they love Jay Youngblood. There you see it again, the lateral press, the winners, the world tag team champions, Steve and Youngblood.